Hey, good evening everyone. My name is Dan Whitfield. I'm an independent candidate running for United States Senate here in Arkansas. Let's go ahead and uh, get this video shared on Facebook and Twitter. So if you'll bear with me just a minute, we can let some people get filed on for a trivia night. Alright. So we have an awesome topic. Uh, one of my favorite things is going to be our topic tonight, Harry Potter. Oh man. I'm really excited for it. I uh, hope you hey, all enjoy Harry Potter's this work video share. All right, ooh, I need to shave. All right. Let's get this shared on Twitter. Let's see here. So if you can, let's go ahead and uh, share this with your friends while I share it on Twitter. We need some people to file on. All right. Well, thank you all for joining me tonight. I do appreciate your time. and. We just do these trivia nights every Wednesday night around 7 p.m. so that we can kind of relax and get away from everything else that's going on. Have a little bit of fun. Lighten up the mood. All right. So we make sure this is all up and ready. And we should be just about set to go. We're going to start in one, maybe two minutes. We'll get the questions coming in. So let me pull up YouTube real quick. All right, so while we're waiting for people to, you know, hop on the live stream, I did want to let you all know that I was able to get some new videos onto my website. So make sure you check out ReplaceTomCotton.com, click on Campaign, and then click on Media. Actually, I think it's Info. Let's see here, we changed that up. Click on About, and then click on Media. And you can see all my videos are there. I've taken all my live streams and just different videos I've done throughout the last couple of years and put them onto um, my website. So I separated by interviews. You can look at short videos, uh, just different things that we've done. You can look at the different trivias are all broken up and then also our live stream updates. And there is actually a really cool one I guess a lot of people probably don't know about because it's kind of old. Um, when I had first got interested in running for this seat, I did a four hour live stream Q&A while I was out catfishing on the side of the lake. So check out my four hour uh, live stream Q&A. You don't have to watch the whole thing, of course, but you can kind of zoom through. I do catch one catfish. He wasn't very big, but he was a nice uh, little flathead. All right. So I've got all this pulled up. Um, Jeopardy. All right. Here we go. Make sure this is ready to go. Solar Mobile just sent me this oh. solar wireless battery pack. I'm excited. Let's see what's inside. All right. Cool. We really have a couple like people on. I'm excited. It's got All right. So let's start over real quick. My name is Dan Whitfield. I'm the independent candidate running for United States Senate here in Arkansas. Every Wednesday night we do trivia night, and tonight's topic is Harry Potter. I love Harry Potter. This is going to be a lot of fun. I have some good questions on here. You'll be able to Google search some of them if you don't, you know, you're not a huge Harry Potter nerd like I am. Um, and then I also have some harder questions. Uh, since I have read the books and seen the movies, uh, there are questions that are going to be a little bit harder to find. So let's see if you all know the answers. Okay, so let's see here. Let me pull this up and we are ready to get started. Some of the questions are easier than others, of course. Um, but they're all a lot of fun. So, I've got this all pulled up. Let me move my charger a little bit. All right. There are going to be three rounds. Each round has ten questions. Whoever gets the most questions right in one round wins the round. You get one point per question. Um, the, I'll have a couple harder questions I'm going to make worth two points. And as always, if you're interested in getting a free bumper sticker for participating tonight... Um, just send me a message, be like, hey, I participated in Trivia Night, I'd like a free bumper sticker, and send me your mailing address, and I'll get a bumper sticker mailed out to you. 
Um, at some point at the end, I'm also going to give a short update because, of course, uh, our court date is coming up. The hearing is on May 27th. Um, I guess I'll just talk about that real fast. Uh, we are suing uh, the Secretary of State, John Thurston, for ballot access. Uh, the defendant's counsel uh, asked for the case to be dropped and dismissed without a court date due to uh, no standing. So the judge looked at their plea and they basically said, no, we're not dropping the case. There is standing. I want to hear it. So our case, our court hearing will be on May 27th at 9 a.m. in Little Rock at 500 West Capitol Ave. And uh, it's going to be in courtroom 4C. So I created an event. It's going to start at 8 a.m. is when I'll be there. So if y'all can get there around 8 in the morning, uh, we can meet each other. I can answer any questions y'all have. Show some support. I will have 100 free face masks to give out to the first 100 people that show up. I will also have um, signs. that are just signs you can hold, have my logo on them. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be reporters out there. So if you have collected signatures for us and you would like to share your experience with a reporter, I'm sure there'll be lots of opportunities to you know, do a short interview and things like that. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with Harry Potter trivia. All right. Round one, question one. This is going to be like the easiest question we have, okay? When a student goes to Hogwarts, they get placed in a class by the Sorting Hat. Which class was Harry Potter placed in by the Sorting Hat? Hey Jim, thanks for joining us. Alright, come on, this is an easy question. Um, which class was Harry placed in by the Sorting Hat? So question number one was, there we go, getting some invites sent out real quick, sorry. People coming up in here. Right. Okay, so this is round one, question number one. Gryffindor. Oh, there's some answers. Sorry, I guess I'm getting a little bit of lag today. Awesome. So, Sean and Jim, y'all both got a Gryffindor. Okay, bonus question. When the sorting hat was put onto Harry Potter his first year, it originally wanted to put him into what class and why? What class did the sorting hat want to put him in before Gryffindor? Right, this is round one, question number two. Well, actually, it's not question number two. This is a bonus question. Harry Potter, when the sorting hat was put on in his first year, was sorted into Gryffindor. But what um, class did the sorting hat want to put him in besides Gryffindor? Slytherin. Aha. There we go. And why? What was the characteristic, the trait that he showed on why it wanted to put him in Slytherin? What was that? You could be great, you know, for real. <laughs> and uh, what was the trait that the Sorting Cap wanted to put him into Slytherin for? Anybody? All right, I'm going to move on because we've got a bunch of questions still. So, it, it was ambition and cunning. Um, was it ambition? Now I'm going to have to double check myself. I know it was cunning. It could have been ambition as well. Ha -ha. Sweet. So, moving on. Question number two. I lied. The last question wasn't the easiest question. This one is, how did Harry Potter get the scar on his forehead? How did Harry Potter get the scar on his forehead? How did 
Harry Potter get the scar on his forehead. Voldemort's killing curse. There we go. Avada Kedavra. All right. Nice. So that's how he got the lightning-shaped scar when he was a baby. Voldemort tried to kill him. Question number three. This is going to be a little bit harder. How many staircases does Hogwarts have? How many staircases are there at Hogwarts? And let's see. Um, the characteristics for Slytherin are cunning, resourcefulness, and ambition. Why do things? He should not be named. Killed him and his parents. No, he's too much. Yes. yes. One twenty-seven. You're kind of close, but it's more than one hundred and twenty-seven. One hundred and forty-two. Oh, look at that. Dean coming in with the hardcore answer. 100% correct. 142 different staircases at Hogwarts. And they're constantly moving. There's no way I could be a student there. I would get lost. All right. Round one, question number four. Dumbledore has a scar above his left knee. What is the scar the perfect map? The scar above Dumbledore's left knee is a map of what? What is the scar above Dumbledore's left knee? Hey Bob, thanks for joining Luba. The London Underground. Aha. Look at this. Sean a Harry Potter fan like I am. Sounding like it. Alright, next question. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit harder, okay? A little bit harder of a question. In book number four, The Goblet of Fire. There was one obstacle in the maze that they left out of the movie. What did they leave out of the movie from the Goblet of Fire that was in the book? I was really disappointed as well. They left, a, they left this obstacle out of the movie, but it was in the book for the Goblet of Fire. The Sphinx! Oh, I love it, Nicholas. That was super fast. I know, I couldn't believe they didn't have the Sphinx in there. I was like super disappointed. All right, moving on to the next question. Question number six of round one. For Harry's 17th birthday, what color did Hermione turn the leaves of the Weasley's crab apple tree? What color did Hermione turn the leaves on the crab apple tree? Oh, how have you never seen the movies or read the books? And Harry Potter was amazing. <laughs> Man, Harry Potter got me through some of the hardest parts of my life. And that's for sure. All right. So the question was, for Harry's 17th birthday, what color did Hermione turn the leaves on the Weasley's crab apple tree? Close enough, Sean. It was gold um, because of the snitch, and he was the seeker. Awesome. So, question number seven, round one. Who is Fluffy? Who is Fluffy, and what movie was Fluffy in? Oh, I've got a good question for number ten as well. I'm excited. So who was Fluffy? What was Fluffy doing? And what movie was Fluffy in? 
Yes, Luba, he was the three-headed dog. A Severus. And... He was protecting the Philosopher's Stone. Aha, I love it. So Fluffy was a three-headed dog protecting the Sorcerer's Stone in the very first movie. And quick question. What was Fluffy's weakness? How did they defeat Fluffy the dog? That's a bonus question. How did they get past Fluffy the dog? Music. Yeah, they played some music and he went straight to sleep. All right. Next question, question number eight of round one. Who poses as Mad-Eye Moody? And honestly, he's one of my favorite teachers too, um, while he's pretending to be Mad-Eye Moody. But who pretended to be Mad-Eye Moody? Who's pretending to be Mad-Eye Moody? Come on, come on, come on. I don't want to give away too much, but oh, I guess that's already a huge spoiler alert. By the way, if you're going to participate in this trivia, it's going to be some spoilers. <laughs> Barty Crouch Jr. There we go. The Minister of Magic's son. And he was actually a Death Eater. Insane. All right. Question number nine. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> By the way, lots of spoilers. I hope you've already seen Harry Potter. Question number nine. Who, here, how about this? Question number nine. What was all over the internet one hour after the book came out? <laughs> what was all over the internet one hour after the book, uh, I guess I should say which book it was, uh, The Half-Blood Prince. Um, what was all over the internet one hour after The Half-Blood Prince came out? One hour after this book came out, something flooded the internet and people were really upset. What flooded the internet one hour after The Half-Blood Prince came out? The book. Who kills Professor Dumbledore? <laughs> Who kills Professor Dumbledore? No idea. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. So this was question number nine, round one. When the sixth book came out, The Half-Blood Prince... Within one hour, something flooded the internet and made a lot of people angry. What was it? Who killed Dumbledore? Come on, y'all. I don't know who killed Dumbledore. Oh, my gosh. Must be lagging. Severus Snape. Yes, Snape killed Dumbledore. You know, uh, they had the entire book series. You're like, is he a bad guy? Is he a good guy? He helps Harry. He helps Malfoy. What is going on? He killed Dumbledore. He must be the bad guy. All right. Bonus question. Not bonus. This is actually question number 10, but I get to make up question number 10. Question number 10. Why did... Severus Snape kill Albus Dumbledore. Why did he do it? Why did Severus Snape kill Albus Dumbledore? Oh 
Oh man, I'm looking at myself. I really need to shave. I got bad quarantine hair. I'm sorry, y'all. One of these days I'm gonna get a haircut. Maybe like three more months. <laughs> Not to mislead Voldemort and gain his trust. Voldemort already trusted him at this point. This is probably a, a bit of a harder question, but any like uh, true Harry Potter fan, y'all gotta know this one. Albus Dumbledore asked him to. Why did Albus Dumbledore ask Severus Snape to kill him? <laughs> We're getting there. We are making progress. Why did Albus Dumbledore want Snape to kill him? This is question number 10 of round one. Why did Albus Dumbledore ask Severus Snape to kill him? a good one. Alright, I'm gonna give it like 15 more seconds. 15 more seconds. Why did Dumbledore ask Snape to kill him? Yes! Oh, Luba comes in for the win! Because the Master won. Um, it's one of the Deathly Hollows, and whoever kills the owner of the wand is the person who the wand belongs to. So Dumbledore knew if Malfoy killed him, Malfoy would get the wand. So he asked Snape to kill him and use the wand because he always knew that Sna he knew what side Snape was on, and he knew why. So awesome! Yes, the Elder Wand. I called it the Master Wand, the Zelda Master Sword. My bad. Um, the Elder Wand. So let's see here. That's super awesome, Luba. Oh man, that was not an easy question. All right, and that hard question was the end of round one. Making progress. We are ready to begin round two, so let's just jump right into it. In which way does Harry Potter catch his first snitch? In what way does Harry Potter catch his first snitch? Round two, question one. How does Harry Potter catch his first snitch? This is going to be in the Sorcerer's Stone, the first movie. With his mouth, yeah. Yep, no one knew, surprised everybody. Got lucky in his mouth. Question number two of round two. What does the mirror of Erised do? What does the mirror of Erised do? Mirror of Erised. You see it throughout the series. Um, I think it's in the book a lot more than it is in the movie. Um, Harry actually used to go and sit in front of the Mirror of Erised for, I think it was like six months or something like that. Like a long time he'd go to the mirror and go to the mirror. And one day he went and it was gone and he freaked out. Uh, because Dumbledore knew that he was... Uh, it is your deepest desire. Alright, Luba's killing Harry Potter trivia. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Dumbledore was starting to get worried because he knew that he had to focus on what was here, not what was in the past. All right, moving on. Round two, question number three. How are Hogwarts students placed in their houses? How does a Hogwarts student get placed in a house? I guess we kind of went over it earlier. Easy question. Sorting hat, very easy question. Awesome. Cool beans. So it was the sorting hat. That is what places children in their houses. All right. Round two, question number four. What magical talent does Harry have that he shares with Voldemort? What talent do both Voldemort and Harry have that is very rare? 
<laughs> I know it's hard doing these trivias as well because there's a little bit of lag. I'm pretty sure there's like a 10 second delay from when I ask a question to when I actually see someone respond. And I see the responses in different, super fast, parcel tongue. Um, I see them in different orders in which you guys might be typing them as well. So yes, Parcel Tongue, he can speak to snakes. Um, and when Dumbledore first meets Tom Riddle, who is Lord Voldemort, or, or he who must not be named, um, when he meets him in the orphanage, when he asks, uh, he says, I can speak to snakes, is this normal? Or, you know, is am I different or something like that? He plays it off like it's not a big deal, but it is kind of a big deal. All right, moving on. Question number five of round two. All right, I gotta come up with a question for this one. So what's a good question? Um, let's do a question from The Order of the Phoenix, the fifth book. The, uh, let's see. Okay, so in The Order of the Phoenix, the book, The Defense of against actually i don't think he's a defense against the dark arts teacher there's a teacher from the fifth book that was not in the fifth movie who is the teacher that they left out of the fifth movie i thought he had an important role too i like the way that they had the character development between his and harry's relationship and i was really surprised they left them out it could have been because uh, technology at the time maybe but if they could go back and remake them, I'm pretty sure they'd put it back in. So who is the teacher that's in the book that is missing from the movie? Or his name's kind of hard. I don't even really remember his name. What species is he? What is he? His species. What species is the teacher that is missing from the movie that they put in the book? I think he was an astrology teacher? I think it was astrology. It was either astrology or defense against the dark arts. Anybody? We'll go 10 more seconds, because it's kind of a harder one. It is, it's Freens the Centaur. Ha <laughs> ha, there's one for Sean. Awesome job. Yeah, I couldn't believe they didn't put a centaur teacher in. The only centaurs that they showed were uh, in the fifth movie at the end when they were fighting uh, Professor Umbridge, or I guess Headmaster Umbridge at that time. All right. Uh, but yeah, he was. I couldn't believe they left him out. I was really surprised. So. Round two, question number six. How did Moaning Myrtle die? What's caused Moaning Myrtle to die? What was the death of Moaning Myrtle? Oh, there's so many good questions. I'm really excited. <laughs> We're almost to round three. So it was what, round two, question six. What caused Moaning Myrtle's death? The Basilisk. Yes, it did. It caught her in the bathroom. Ah, uh, it's too bad. Uh, unfortunately, I think she was the only student that died that year. When it was released, um, everyone else was cured. All right, moving on. Round two, question number seven. What type of dragon did Harry face during the Triwizard Tournament? What was the breed of dragon that Harry faced during the Triwizard Tournament? Hey, Allison, thanks for joining us. What was the breed of dragon that Harry had to face during the Triwizard Tournament? Hungarian Horntail. 
The most vicious of all dragons. Yes. Awesome. Man, we're going to have to watch Harry Potter one of these days, Luba. We'll have to have our families come together, and we're going to have a Harry Potter marathon. I think it would be super fun. I've got them all, and we can watch them on a big screen. It'd be really cool. Let's see. Moving on. Round two, question number eight. When a person is attacked by a Dementor, not kissed, but attacked, what is the one thing that will make a person feel better? What will make a person feel better after a Dementor attack? What makes a person feel better after a chocolate? Yes! It is not peanut butter. Peanut butter and chocolate is like one of the best combos on earth though. You can't go wrong with Reese's. But it is chocolate. Chocolate will make you feel better. All right, round two, question number nine, moving right along. This is a pretty easy question, but who dies during the Triwizard Tournament in the fourth movie, The Goblet of Fire? Who dies? Who later plays Edward in Twilight? <laughs> who dies during the Triwizard Tournament? <laughs> Cedric Diggory. It was, yeah, a really sad moment. Um, fortunately, Harry was able to bring the body back. Um, and wow, that whole fight between Harry and Voldemort uh, right after the Triwizard Tournament was way better in the book um, than it was in the movie. It's like a whole chapter long. Um, gives tons of details of what's actually going on and why it's happening when the movie doesn't. But anyways, moving right along. Round two. Question number 10. That's a question for me to come up with. All right, let's do a question from... I guess we'll do one from the fifth, the fifth one, um, The Order of the Phoenix. And the question is... What... When Harry Potter gets in trouble for talking about Lord Voldemort, Professor Umbridge gives him a punishment. It's a quill, and I don't remember the name of the quill, but when you write something down, it scars it into the back of your hand. What does Harry Potter have to write that gets into the back of his hand? What is Harry Potter's punishment that he must write that scrapes its way into his hand? Will not tell lies. <laughs> yes, it is. I will not tell lies. And when Umbridge asks him to lie to the centers and say that she's there to help him, he says, I mustn't tell lies. All right. We've made it through round two. We're about 60% of the way done now. Because um, I do, I added some bonus questions in there. I know Harry Potter is so fun. I love it. Um, Round number three. Round three, question one. Who is Harry's fifth year defense against the dark arts teacher? Who is Harry's fifth year defense against the dark arts teacher? I just thought of some really good questions. Oh, I wish we could have a million questions with Harry Potter. 30 is not enough. Oh my gosh. Who is the fifth year defense against the dark arts teacher? Anybody? The fifth year defense against the dark arts teacher. <laughs> I will not warmonger. I will not warmonger. <laughs> I will not take money from billionaires. Give tax cuts to them and raise the taxes on my constituents. Yeah, I could think of some really nice long ones. 
I think of things that would cover his whole arm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it is not the Chinese Wuhan virus. <laughs> it's called COVID-19. Yeah. Not China virus. Awesome. It is not Moody. The fifth year one is not Moody. Moody was the fourth year defense the, against the dark arts teacher. Well, technically Moody was never really a defense against the dark arts teacher, although you do see him as an order at the uh, end of the fifth movie or book, the, the Order of the Phoenix. Um, but Marty Crouch was the fourth year defense against the dark arts teacher because he helped um, Harry get through all the challenges in the Tri-Wizard Tournament. one's stumping y'all. It's okay. Um, it was a woman. She was my least favorite character in the entire series. I literally hated her. Like, I really did not like her at all. And it, it's so much worse in the book. You're just reading this book and you're like, what? Like, it's terrible. And the movie kind of gives her a bad picture, but ah. Uh, the book gets way worse. It was Umbridge. Professor Dolores Umbridge. Remember because she teaches them the Crucio curse? Um, she even uses a lot of cadaver in front of the kids. Um, she uses Imperio. She does all of the, you know, the terrible magics. What are these called? Now it's space in the, uh, they're not unthinkable magics, unthinkable spells. Uh, not dark spells, whatever they're called. Yeah, she does them in front of students. Um, anyways, moving on. Uh, bonus question. Who was Harry Potter's favorite Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher? Who was his favorite one? I guess maybe this could be an opinion, but I'm pretty sure uh, this was his favorite Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher. Who was his favorite one? From the second book, The Chamber of Secrets. Professor Lupus. I'm pretty sure that was his favorite. Uh, yeah, Lupin. Yeah, not Lupus. <laughs> He's on the disease. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was his favorite one because, you know, he was best friends with his dad and, you know, he really didn't want to see him go. <laughs> um, okay, let's see here. Next question. I've got so many other questions coming ahead. Okay, round three, question number two. In the sixth movie, The Half-Blood Prince, Dumbledore's hand is rotten. What made Dumbledore's hand rotten? Um, which Horcrux was it, though? Was the ring? It was a cursed ring, the Horcrux. Um, yeah, too bad. All right, moving on. This is round three, question three. What does Felix Felici do? It is a potion. What does the Felix Felici potion do? Do you see this potion in? I believe it's in the sixth movie, uh, The Half Blood Prince. Turn you into a cat. Um, no, the cat one is polymorph juice if you put a cat hair in it. Um, which Hermione accidentally gets um, her cat, uh, Crankshaw. Oh, I don't remember her cat's name. Crankshaw, something like that. She gets a cat hair in there and then she drinks a polymorph potion instead of looking like one of the Slytherins to infiltrate the Slytherins. She ends up turning herself into a cat for a little while. <laughs> All right, moving on. Round three, question number four. What is a Horcrux? Crookshanks, there you go, that's right. What is a Horcrux? Do -do 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 -do. 
so hard to predict this Jeopardy theme. It goes on for 10 hours and 24 seconds. <laughs> a splinter of the soul in a vessel. That is exactly what it is. It is a portion of someone's soul. That's how Voldemort keeps himself alive, is he put out a whole bunch of horcruxes. Let's see here. Bonus question. Who told Tom Riddle what the horcruxes are? Who told Tom Riddle about horcruxes? Who told Tom Riddle what a Horcrux is? Ooh, who told Tom Riddle about Horcruxes? It was a professor. Professor who, after Tom Riddle turned into Voldemort, left Hogwarts and stayed away from Hogwarts until the Half-Blood Prince, when Vol uh, Dumbledore was able to get him to come back. He was one of Tom Riddle's favorite teachers. If Tom Riddle could have a favorite teacher. But Tom Riddle was one of his favorite students. Professor Slugworth. Oh, ah, I just gave you the answer. I'm sorry, Allison. <laughs> uh, professor Slugworth was the professor who um, he like he took on favorite students, and they were usually exceptional people. Let's see here. So next question. <laughs> All right, we have round three. Question number six. We're almost all done, y'all. Almost there. When Dumbledore dies, what does Dumbledore leave to Ron? What does Ron inherit from Dumbledore? What? Oh, thank you, Allison. <laughs> so, round three, question number six. What does Dumbledore will to Ron? The light thingy? I'll take the light thingy, the illuminator. Yes, the light thingy. <laughs> All right. Round three, question number seven. Similar along the line, when Dumbledore dies, what is he buried with? What do they bury with Albus Dumbledore? What is buried with Albus Dumbledore? Pet's name is Scabbard. Scabbard is a rat. Who is Scabbard's the rat? Peter Pettigrew. 
He was George's, uh, he was Harry Potter, his best friend, one of his best friends. They had a couple in their little group, of Sirius Black. Uh, he sold out Harry's family, sold him out to Lord Voldemort, became a Death Eater. And round three, question number nine, what appendage was Peter Pettigrew missing? What did Peter Pettigrew cut off to make it look like he had died? The finger on his hand. Yep, there you go. He cut off his finger. Bonus question. During the fourth movie, after the Triwizard Cup, um, Harry Potter and Cedric Diggory use the key to transport to Tom Riddle where his father died, uh, Tom Riddle's old house. And in order to revive Lord Voldemort into a human form, he had to give what as a sacrifice from a loyal servant? What did he sacrifice to Lord Voldemort to regenerate him. What did Peter Pettigrew sacrifice to Voldemort to resurrect him? His left hand! Yes! Oh man, he did. He cut off his hand. He made that look easy too. He's like, oh, okay. Oh, and the hand fell off. Yeah, it's not that easy. Uh, that's for sure. Let's see here. The flesh of a servant. All right, next question. Little bit harder question, okay? Um, I'm gonna make this one up. Let's see here. The question is, during the very beginning of the second book, Harry Potter gets taken to the uh, Quidditch World Cup by Ron's family, and there are topless creatures, uh, topless women-like creatures, they're not humans, and they entrance men. What are these creatures called? They were left out of the movie, but they're in the book. What are these topless creatures called? They look like women, but they're not women. They are not sirens. Probably made to be after a siren type of character. But not sirens. This is a hard question. Let me see if it even Googles up. Oh, it does. It actually it pops up on Google, so. They did try to make them like kids' movies, but there were no Vila's in it. All right, we are at the home stretch here. Round three, question number 10. Um, so we have a good final question. What can we make a good final question? Um, okay. Uh, it's not that hard of a question, though, but I like the question. Harry Potter and Ginny Weasley, or Ginny, whatever you want to call her. I read the books for a long time. It was Ginny. Ginny Weasley, they get married, and they end up having a son. What is Harry Potter's son's name? What is the name of Harry Potter's son? What is the name of 
Harry Potter's son. Yay, we did Harry Potter trivia. I'm so excited. That was so much fun. I love Harry Potter. Oh, man. Um, when I was younger, I had a lot of angry issues. Um, I was a very angry kid. My parents divorced when I was little, um, and I didn't know how to process that as a child. And I had a lot of anger issues. Um, I saw a counselor, and, uh, you know, after seeing counselors, one counselor... Uh, told me that you know I should read and start reading and she suggested Harry Potter at the time There was only Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. That was the first book and that was when this was all going on And so I was I guess I can say fortunate enough to find Harry Potter at the very beginning and You know, I, I read the book and I loved it and then I got to wait for every single book to come out And then I got to read them all with anticipation um, And yeah, I love Harry Potter Help me through some tough times all right. Well, thank you all for joining me on our Wednesday Trivia Night topic, Harry Potter. Um, real quick, I'll go over just a fast update because there's a lot of stuff going on right now um, as far as our campaign goes. We are in a lawsuit against the Secretary of State, John Thurston. He has taken money from Tom Cotton, my opponent. He, his counsel, the defendant's counsel, is Attorney General Leslie Rutledge and her four attorney generals in their office. These, uh, So his counsel is the Attorney General. She's taken money from Tom Cotton. So my opponent has given money to the person I'm suing for ballot access and his rep his counsel, his representation. Um, yeah, that's super awesome and definitely not a conflict of interest. <laughs> Anyways, we do have our day in court. It is going to be May 27th at 9 a.m. at 500 West Capitol Avenue in Little Rock, and it's in courtroom 4C. Now, I'm asking that people show up at 8 a.m. so we can be there a little bit early. That way um, I can get to meet you all, you know, answer any questions you have, listen to your concerns, suggestions, and things like that. Um, we are going to practice social distancing, so I do ask that people try to stay six feet apart. Um, bring a mask if you have one. Everyone should have one, hopefully. But bring a mask. You know, we want to be safe. And I will have 100 face masks that have my logo on them. Um, I'll give out those 100 face masks to the first 100 people who make it there. And then I'll also have some signs that people can hold that, you know, say Dan Whitfield and things like that. We are expecting the media to be there. We've put out a press release. Uh, we've contacted a bunch of uh, different reporters from different outlets. So it should be a lot of fun. You know, if you've collected signatures for me, if you're a volunteer, a supporter, make sure when the media is there, uh, feel free to do an interview, you know, tell them about... Um, the struggles you had. Uh, Luba, you collected a freaking ton of signatures. You're really awesome. You were giving me you know, a whole bunch of signatures, and then as soon as COVID-19 hit, you had to stop. And things like that are why we were unable to meet our uh, requirement of 10,000. So feel free to talk to reporters, do interviews, you know, get your five minutes of fame, have fun. Um, it's going to be a good time. The court hearing was said to not take half a day. I'm not sure how long it's going to take. So what I was planning on doing is we can all get there at eight, hang out until nine. And then I know um, it, the judge's order was a little confusing. Um, on one line, it says that the plaintiff, the defendant and their counsel will not be on the premise that we'll be doing it online or through a video chat or some you know similar platform like that. But then the line underneath that says that it's open to the public, the courtroom is. So I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen or go on. Um, I'm going to be there. If, if I have to be sitting on my phone in the courtroom with everyone else, that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, so we'll be there, and you can watch the trial take place. If you want to leave after it begins at like 9.15 or whatever, you can. It's up to y'all. It's just the more support we have, the better. So, you know, if you guys can make it, thank you so much for coming and showing support. We have to get rid of Tom Cotton. We cannot afford another six years going down the same path we're going. We're going to be at war with Iran and China and Mexico and all these other places that he's trying to start wars with. We just can't afford something like that. If we can beat him in November and he loses to an independent in his home state, he loses electability. The Republican Party will not put him up as a presidential candidate if we can beat him this year. We do not want to see a cotton uh, administration that... That's one of the scariest things that I can think of. That's worse than Trump. 
Could you imagine? Wow. Anyways, we got to beat him in November. We have to do this. And in order to beat him, we need ballot access. If we get ballot access, we got this. We're going to have actual representation. So show some support if you can. If you can't make it, I totally understand, especially if you're more high risk. You know, I created an event with all the information on there. Share the event to groups that you're in, to your friends, tell your family about it if they can make it. Let's get some support there. I'd love to have at least 100 people there showing that, you know, we're not messing around. We're here and we're here to win. We're here to get ballot access and we're here to take our state back from the special interest that purchased it six years ago. But that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, how's campaign been going? Um, it's been going good. It's just mostly social media things like this. Uh, you know, myself, we're social distancing. My wife is more high risk and I have a seven-year-old daughter. So we've been really careful about, you know, our social distancing, staying home, except for when we absolutely have to go out. As soon as we get home, we all take showers. We put our clothes in the dryer. Um, when we get groceries, we wipe them down with Clorox wipes. Uh, you know, we're taking it very seriously, like I hope everyone else is. The numbers have been greatly exaggerated, or under-exaggerated, rather. And we just saw that the other day when someone realized that the numbers that, that Asa Hutchinson, our governor, were putting out were misleading. He was taking graphs and putting week-by-week -week bars next to each other, and then he put a day bar. So he's like, oh, you know, this week uh, we had this many cases, and then this week there's only this many cases. Well, this wasn't a week. That was two days. So we have to be careful about the information that they're giving us and make sure it's not misleading. Um, stay safe and keep your family safe. There's no way to tell exactly what's going to happen in the future, but as long as we're practicing safe practices like uh, washing your hands, taking showers, cleaning your clothes, disinfecting things, um, hand sanitizer, all these just little precautions we can take, we can help keep our families safer. But... Thank you all again so much for joining me this evening for our Harry Potter trivia. Our, uh, I believe tomorrow I'm going to be doing a Zoom lunch. So I'll host a Zoom meeting. I'll post the information, make it public. If you all want to just hop on a Zoom meeting, uh, I'm just, I don't know, maybe I'll have a salad or something or an egg and talk with you all. I started running again, trying to get rid of some of this quarantine fat that I've thrown on. Um, but you can join in face-to-face -to -face if you want. You can just have your camera off, but you can actually talk to me and we can have a little bit of uh, FaceTime or vocal time, you know, whatever you want to call it. But we'll, the Zoom, be Zoom meeting will be tomorrow. I'll post it on my page again. Um, yeah, and then we'll be doing our weekly update on Saturday. But thank you all so much for joining me. I do appreciate it. You all have a wonderful evening. Um, if you have any questions or anything, just send me a message. I'll always answer your questions. Oh, and for participating today, if you would like a free bumper sticker, send me a message. Be like, hey, I participated in your trivia night. I'd like a free bumper sticker. Here's my mailing address, and I'll get one sent out to you. But thank you all so much. You guys have a good night. May God bless you all, and may God bless America.